Here's a quick overview of what we're going to be covering today. There are a lot of options for a page builder report, including the size of the paper, the format, and what kinds of things can be included, and so forth. You have the option to start from scratch or to use one of the existing reports that come with AGI 32 and modify it to suit your needs. In this segment, we'll talk about using an existing report and the many options that you have. And then we'll look at how you can build your report from scratch. Now everybody loves tips and tricks and I do have several to share with you. And finally, we'll wrap up and talk about what's on the horizon. So let's start with the, the many options that are available to you in creating a page builder report. So these are some of the options that are available to you as you construct your report. As you can see, you have quite a few choices. We're going to first start a uh, look at how you can use an existing report and modify it as necessary to suit your needs. Most of what you'll see in this segment will also be useful if you decide to create a report from scratch. AGI 32 comes with several existing reports, sometimes called sample reports. They make a good starting place for creating a report that is specific to your project. Sometimes editing something that already exists is easier or faster than starting from scratch. What you see in these bullets are some of the things that you might want to do with an existing report. So let's go to AGI 32. Oops, I went right past it. Go back. There we go. And I'm going to go back to model mode for a second here. So we're going to start here. Um, this is a conference room and has already been calculated for a presentation scene, as it says up here, presentation. So the cove lights and the pendant lights are dimmed. There are calc points on the tabletop and over here on this wall where there is a screen. See it this way. See it maybe better that way, right? So you can, you know, you can maneuver around so that you can see, try to see all of the points in both locations, but it's difficult to see both sets of points on the table and the screen at the same time. So what we want to do is um, we're going to create two views to display those two calc grids separately and then we can include both of those views in our page builder report. So first I'm going to click on the view manager button here. Actually, first I'm going to go back to top view. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here to the view manager button and click up there. Now in this dialog, I'm going to enter another view name, screen. I'll click add, and then I click cascade and resize. So the, with cascade, the views are kind of overlapping. With tiled, they would be side by side. So cascade, they're overlapping, and then resize means they're, they're resized to fit in the working area and so that I can see both of them. So I'll click and, and notice they both have to be highlighted here in order for me to see both views here. All right, so I'm going to zoom extents here and then in, no, that's view one. Let me put these back the way I wanted to have them. I just like to have view one up at the top left and then others coming down to the right and below. It's just the way I like to work. So in screen now, I'm in the screen view and I need to make this to be the screen view, right? I called it screen, but that doesn't make it screen view. So I have to click in here and then I'm going to go to elevation view looking east and I'm going to click, click right in front of that elevation view. All right, so now I'm looking at that wall that has the screen on it. So now I can see both can even zoom in a little bit on this one. That's a little bit better, right? Zoomed extents. So now I can see the numbers in both of these views. So I can work in, I can work in either view because they're both the same project, just seen from two different perspectives. And again, with these two views displayed here in model mode, both of them will be available to include in the page builder report. So let's go to render mode. And this is what we might call an end view. I'm going to smooth it out with anti-aliasing down here in the corner. Kind of smooths things out, makes it look a little bit nicer. 
So this is a picture of the room that I want to include in my page builder report. So now I'm going to click on the page builder tab up here. Now in this dialog, we can choose either to create a new report, which is this tab, or go to open an existing report which is what I'm going to do. In creating a new report, we would be starting with a completely blank page and adding to it as we go. We'll explore that later, but first we're going to look at opening an existing report for this project and modifying it to suit our needs. So that's this tab. AGI 32 comes with several existing reports, which you can see here. They're labeled as sample reports. And if you, sometimes if you've never been here before, this might open up with it, with the header the column very narrow and it's hard to see, you can just slide it over just like I'm doing here. See where my cursor is right on that little border? So I can, I can adjust my, my column widths. So these reports vary in paper size and in orientation, portrait or landscape, and each has a title block. I'm going to select sample letter portrait. Now it's a sample size report, a sample report on letter size paper in portrait orientation. Then I click OK. This is the master page. It tells me that down here the master button is, is depressed. The master page is not a page in the actual report, but everything that's on the master page will appear on all of the pages of the report. But you, can put, you can't put just anything on the master page, only drawing entities and image ports. This master page has lines and text, which are drawing entities, and it has an AGI32 logo up here in the corner, which is in an image port. What's on the other pages of the report? Well, let's take a look. On page one, which I get to by clicking on this button down here, has two schedules, the Luminaire schedule and the Luminaire location summary. Page two, has three more schedules. The numeric summary, which is an older version of the calculation summary. It has a statistical area summary and an LPD area summary. And this project doesn't have an LPD area or a statistical area, so these two schedules are empty of content. On to page three. So here we have a viewport with the view from model mode that has the illuminance calculations on the tabletop. And finally, page four has a place for an image. It could be the image that we saw in render mode, for example. As you can see, a lot of the work of creating a nice report for our project has been done for us simply by selecting an existing report to start with. We'll want to change a few things, but not much. We'll want to put the nice visualization and render mode into the report, as well as the model mode view of the calc points on the screen. And we'll want to modify the schedules shown, since a couple of them don't apply to this project. So let's go back to the master page. This is the best place to add or modify anything that you want to appear on all of the pages of your report. The title block is a good example. So let's see how to modify this page. Here in the title block, let's change the name of the project. Note that in Page Builder, there are two toolkits over here, the Page Builder Toolkit and the Drawing and Schedules Toolkit. I need the Drawing and Schedules Toolkit. And then here, what I want to do is edit text on that master page. So I'm going to click on this edit text button here, the A, letter A with a hammer on it, right? And I'll select the text that I want to edit. Then I'll type something new in here. If I could spell or type, okay, oh, classroom, that's a different project. This is conference room. Isn't it fun watching somebody else type, especially when they make mistakes? Okay, so conference room. Notice that I could also change the font, could change it here, and in doing so, I'd also be able to pick a different color, so I'll do that just because. Right. There we go. Any of the other text on the page can be changed the same way, of course. The AGI32 logo here can be changed to perhaps your company logo or the project logo. The way to do that is similar to what we're going to do on page four, so we're going to hold off on that for now. Let's go to page one. So page one, here you can see that we have the new project name is up here, as I typed it in, in um, even in blue and it's be all on, on all the other pages as well because I changed it on the master page. Now, as, I saw, as we saw a few minutes ago, 
Page one has two schedules on it, filled in for us with the relevant information from this project. This is the Luminaire schedule and the Luminaire location summary. Let's say that for our project, we don't need to provide the exact coordinates of the luminaires, but would rather include other information instead. So we'll delete the luminaire location summary and add two other schedules instead. The delete button is over here. Let's select that. I'll click on the schedule. You have to click right on a line of the schedule. When it goes gray and it says down here, one selected, press right mouse or enter to delete. So I right click, and it goes away. There's a little ghost image here, but that'll, be, that'll go away the next time the screen is refreshed, or I can click on the little pencil up here for redraw. Now to place a new schedule, I click over here on the Schedules button. And in Schedule Manager, in the Schedule Types, I'm going to select Calculation Summary. And I'm going to accept the default fields over here, but I'm going to change the width of the calc field from 24 to 15. Why am I doing that? Well, while putting this weather webinar together, I found that the default field width caused the schedule to be a little too wide when I placed it on the page. I'm also going to change the font over here because Arial Black is um, too heavy. I'm going to just change it to plain old Arial. And I'm going to change this color back to black. And I also need to change the text size here. The text size is given relative to the paper. And this is the size that it will be on the paper when it's printed out. A value of 0.15 or 0.2 will work pretty well when the units are in inches, as they are here. And you don't have to type a leading zero. AGI understands that 0.15 is the same as 0 0.15, but I type a leading zero usually uh, just helps make you helps you to see that I have a decimal. And if your paper is in metric units, the text size will be given in millimeters instead of inches. And I click OK. I've got it attached to my cursor. I put it right there. Let's place one more schedule. I can right click to bring that command up again or click on the schedule button, either one. This time I'm going to select scene manager, excuse, excuse, excuse me, scene summary, and I'm going to accept the default fields, but this time I'm going to change the width of the channel and label fields both to 20, again to make them fit. Channel, scene summary, channel and label. Oh, there it is. There we go, 20. The font and the text size are remembered from last time, so I'm good with that. So I'll click OK. Now notice that there's a hint down here, and the hint says that I can reschedule, the, resize the schedule before placing it. I'll show you how to do that by clicking, holding down Control and Shift and clicking my up or down arrows. Right. Well, I'm going to, this is the size that it was, um, and it matches the others, so I'll put it right there. What if you place a schedule and you notice that it doesn't fit very well, like originally happened to me when I was developing this webinar, or you forgot to select a field that you wanted to include, or whatever. You simply use the Edit Schedule button, select the schedule that you want, and then make the changes that you want and click OK.